Hello everyone, happy Friday. It's Joel with Anansi Creative and today we're going to be taking a look at how to create a pop-up modal, I believe that's how it's pronounced, inside of Webflow. This is going to be more of the beginner version. Next week I'm going to take a look at more of an advanced version that uses some custom code. But this method can be done completely inside of Webflow. Because this is a bit more of a beginner method, I'm going to show a bit more of the build process uh, just in case you guys aren't 100% familiar with Webflow. So let's get started. So we already have a bit of a website. What we want to do is tie this pop-up to the contact button. So instead of that taking us to a different page, we're just going to have it pop up on the screen and then you'll be able to exit out. So to start, we're going to bring in an additional div. We can use the command K keyboard shortcut and then type in div. We can then drag this into the body section and right away, we're going to set the position to fixed. That way, if you were to scroll down the page, this is never going to scroll out of view. So let's resize this. We'll go with 100 VW for the width, and that's going to set it to take up the entire viewport width. We'll set it to 100 V8 for height. So now this takes up the entire, the entire viewport. We'll give this a background color, we'll go with black. And it looks like we've got a little problem here. So we can't see this div block. And to fix that, we'll just go into the Z index, hit the up arrows and bring that forward in front of everything else. When you're doing this on an actual project, you'll want to make sure that you name all of your classes nice and neat. We'll bring in an additional div block inside of this one. And this one we're going to give a size of something like a 600 in width. We want to center this and we're going to do that actually without using flex. And I covered this method in a previous video. How we can do this is go automatic on the margins. We can set this to absolute and to fill or so that it has 0% on all sides of the position. I'm just going to style this and then we'll be right back with configuring it. Okay, so here we have the contents of our form uh, fully filled out. So the only thing that we need to do is we need to add an exit button so that when people go to close this, they are able to do so. So to do that, we're going to bring in an additional div and we're going to set this to uh, position absolute. We'll set this to be on the uh, top right hand corner. Okay, with our icon, we will drag that into our div block here. And we're just going to give the div block a little bit of padding all around. You can hold shift to do that. So we have our pop-up built. Now we just need to configure this. First thing we're going to do, we're going to set the display of this to none, and that's going to hide it. We're going to select our button and then we can go into interactions. We can go element trigger and go to mouse click. On first click we will start an animation and once we're here then we can go and select this. We'll set timed animation to hide and show and we're going to set this to display 
block. Actually, before we do that, let's set an initial state for this. Let's go hide show again and set as initial state and set that to hide. The next thing we're going to add is a bit of an animation so that this is smoother and we're going to do that with opacity. We're actually going to set this as the initial state as well and then we'll bring in opacity and set this after it becomes visible. We'll give it a duration and maybe use in out quad as the easing and let's take a look at this. See if this works. It does, but if we try to exit out, we can't. So we're going to go to, all right, so let's configure the exit button. We're going to go to interactions. We'll go same thing, element trigger, mouse click on first click, start an animation. So we need to make sure that we're affecting the correct element again. And we'll go timed animations, set the opacity, set it to zero. And then after it's become transparent, we'll make sure that this is not blocking elements on the screen. And we do that by setting the display to none. So let's check this out and see if it works. It does. Now one fine point, we don't have the right cursor. This doesn't look like a button. Let's change that. We'll go to div block six, go into the styling panel all the way to the bottom. There's cursor settings and we'll set this to pointer. That way it'll look like a button. Try this again. That looks better. All right, so that is your custom modal. Let me know in the comments if I'm pronouncing that word wrong. Uh, this is how to do it. One last point. Since we're going to have this on multiple pages, instead of duplicating everything, once we have this configured exactly the way we want it, what we can do is we can make these symbols. And by making these symbols, we can simply drag these into every additional page that we create. And it's going to carry over all of the interactions. So we don't have to do any of this work a second time. Now let's go and create an additional page and we can command K and search for it. Drag this in, command K, contact symbol, drag that in and check this out. It works on the new page with no additional work. All right, so that's it for this one. Next week, we're going to be taking a look at a more advanced way of creating one of these. And that one is going to be done using custom code. So that's going to allow us to do things like configure the escape key to close it out, as well as use the entire screen as a trigger to close it. So stay tuned for that, subscribe to the channel, Help support us on the YouTube algorithm by giving us a like and a comment. I appreciate you guys watching and I will see you next time.